In the previous video on velocity time graphs, I mentioned that you can find the displacement from this kind of graph. In this video, I'll show you how to do that for a couple different types of motion. In this first example, we have a dog running at a constant velocity of 6 meters per second, and he runs in a straight line for 4 seconds. So, how far did he run? Well, mathematically, you can you know, see it's obviously it's a very straightforward answer. Since the acceleration is zero, that whole term drops out. And the answer is 24 meters. But you can do this. You can solve the same problem graphically. If you find the area under the, we call it the area under the curve, which is a little misleading since in this case there's obviously not a real curve, but a straight line. But that's what it's called, the area under the curve. And so here we have a rectangle of height six and width four, because we're looking at the whole motion. And to find the area of that rectangle, of course, is just the length times the width. And so we get 24 meters, and you notice how the units, the seconds cancel out. Meters per second times seconds, the seconds cancel, and you're left with just meters. So that's the simplest example you would see, but certainly a very important one. Here's one where we have accelerated motion. And so as you read here, you notice we have an object that starts from rest and accelerates at 4 meters per second every second for 4 seconds. So mathematically, again using the, using the quadratic function, with uh, starting at rest, that term drops out. In four seconds, you do end up with 32 meters from the starting point. Well, let's look at that from the graph perspective. Graphically, of course, since this is a velocity time graph, the slope of this line needs to equal the acceleration. And so sure enough, you rise 16 while you run four, so that does have a slope of four. Now, to find the area under this curve, well, now we really have a triangle, as we remember from basic geometry, the high, uh, area of a triangle, is one half the base times the height. So we take one half times four times 16, which is half of 64, which is 32, which of course is the same answer we got using the math. So very common also to, to have triangles. So basically know how to find the area of rectangles and triangles. Now that really is helpful when you have to deal with something like this. This is, a, this is a graph of several motions that are occurring consecutively, one right after the other. Teachers, like me, like to put questions like this on the test. And so, uh, in this case, what you do is you simply need to divide the, the total area into smaller pieces that are made up of shapes you can deal with. Obviously, in this case, we uh, have a triangle, then a rectangle, and a triangle. I guess you could get into some trapezoid functions, but don't really see the point of that here. Um, and so it's just a matter of finding the area of each of these pieces and then simply adding them up to get the total answer. Now remember, when you see a problem like this on the test, you're not going to see these shapes. All you're going to see is, uh, is this black line. It's up to you to create the shapes. Certainly, a problem could involve a negative velocity, an object going in whatever is the negative direction. And in that case, the area always goes back to the zero mark and in this case so here's an object that has negative velocity because we're in this negative velocity region and so part of the time the object was moving backwards part of the time the object was moving forward in order to find the answer you you simply find you have a negative area here in the red zone positive area in the green zone and then not surprisingly if you're not moving you're not displacing either so that's zero area Oh, okay, well what if you see this one? We obviously have a curve feature. How would we find the area under here? Well, I see Newton kind of asked himself the same question. How would he find the area of this? And it turns out it's a math where you have actually uh, tiny tri rectangles that, he, that he, he figured this area could be divided into tiny rectangles. And that was one of the reasons that he created calculus so that he could find the answer to this question. Certainly in, in general physics we will not worry about that, but Maybe in the future, if you take AP Physics C, uh, that is a question that you will be able to answer.